Hi everyone, I'm JD from the Leather Journals and I have got my new personal journal here to share with you. I have been working in this throughout the last few months. I started in August and I have been loving using this journal um, just for my own sort of self-expression. Um, I'm using it as a junk journal, as a scrapbook, as a um, art journal, all different ways of using it just for straight writing sometimes. I'll go through a bit more in detail page by page and just share how I kind of use this journal, how I add things into it and the inspiration behind it and all that kind of thing. So first of all, the inspiration behind it was my art journals. So last year I started this journal not this one, this one. I started this journal in December last year and I absolutely loved it. I used the pages out of order and I just kind of used it as an art journal where anything goes. I added some paint here, some stickers, some book page, some collage, um, some washi tape, some vellum, music paper, photos, doily, did a bit of doodling and drawing, um, and tissue paper here, labels, all different sorts of things. This was the very first page that I did in this journal, and that sort of set the tone for the rest of it, where I could just put anything in here. So I really, really got into collage and using up the things. So what I have in here is a box of all different papers, scraps, wallpaper, vellum, book pages, music paper, tissue paper, pattern paper, ledgers. Uh, I've got photos in there. I've got a bit of scrapbook paper, some all different things, note taking that I've done, um, printable kits, there's some napkins there, doilies. Um, there's some like envelopes and some different types of textured papers, some note papers, envelopes, just everything and anything, off cuts from projects, um, anything that I pick up from my day-to-day -day life as well, little doodles that I do, um, some flowers there, just random things. And then this one is a pack of um, cutouts from magazines with different words. So this box actually was quite um, not this full. It was quite low. But as I keep making more projects, I get more scraps and offcuts, and I just put them in here. And as I collect more things throughout my life, throughout my days, it all just goes in here. So I actually do want to go through this and actually start using them. Sometimes I have this rush of creativity and I use all the things. Other times it's more of like a collecting gathering stage. Um, and so I want to kind of get this box a bit more streamlined, streamlined and then that helps me actually use things and do more pages. Uh, but yeah, I absolutely loved this journal. And then I used this one when that finished for my next art journal and I used Messy May as a way of filling it up as well. But you can kind of see the same sort of style. We've got the collage, we've got doodling, we've got paint, we've got all different materials used in this. Um, I'll show you this box as well. And this one is where I keep all my uh, laces and fabrics and different pieces that I absolutely love and that I might want to use to add into my journal pages as well. So that's kind of the variety of items that I like to use in my journals. And then let's do a, a flip through of this one now. And I hope that gives you some ideas and inspiration of different things you can collect from your own life to put in your journal. So your favorite laces, your favorite fabrics, your favorite papers, wallpapers, as well as all the things that you pick up from your life, you know, like receipts, little notes that you take, little doodles that you draw, um, little things that you pick up from your day-to-day -day living. You can keep all of those as well. Photos, of course, um, book pages that you're drawn to. I did some drawing here just to emphasize the colors. I've used a sticker here, a book page here, 
Um, so yeah, I just love combining everything. Um, I've left this front page blank because I want to do a title page later on. Um, and I'll write the details of the journal on the title page, the date I started, the date I finished, how I used the journal, that kind of thing, and why I started the journal. So I'll leave that till later. I tend to not fill that in sometimes until the very end, like the last page that I do, just to kind of wrap it up, sum it all up. Um, and then how I'm using it in terms of what I'm journaling about. It's kind of twofold. Sometimes my method is just to decorate a page and I have no idea what I will journal about. I just want to get my favorite pieces on the page or things I picked up from that day and put them on the page. So that's two different ways of journaling as well. This is sort of like a catch-all. I journal any way I want to in here. It's not a consistent method. It's just anything goes. Um, so you could, sometimes I just have random things on my desk they don't necessarily match, they're just there. And that will be my um, way to journal. I'll just, what's on my desk, that's what I put on the page. Other times I will actually use the treasures. I'll use the pretty favorite things and dedicate a page to that. Um, and sometimes I'll do a mix, um, anything goes. And it's just a way of getting myself journaling, using the pages, using the things and expressing my creativity it's giving me a creative outlet that i need for you know my own sanity <laughs> for my own therapeutic value and however it comes out is how it comes out i'm not putting any limitations on it i'm literally just doing this for my own sort of soul well-being my own soul survival and yeah some pages look a lot more sort of well put together more thought out and pretty Others are just, you know, completely random, not really meaningful at all. Um, and then going back to those other two styles of journaling, sometimes, yeah, I will just decorate the page, having no idea what I'm going to journal about. Or maybe I do have an idea of what I'm going to journal about, but it has nothing to do with how I've decorated it. I wanted to give you some examples, actually. So, so you hopefully you can see better what I'm trying to say. This is a page that has nothing to do with the journaling. These are just things that I had on my desk at that time. And actually, it reminds me of what I was doing that day. So it's kind of two types of journaling. You don't even need to have writing. By the things that you put on the page, that can remind you and take you right back to, oh, yes, I remember what I did that day. I was making something and doing this project. And yeah, but the journaling has to do with soccer. It has to do with the Australian soccer team and how we got right into it here in Australia for a little while. Um, and so, yeah, I'm writing about soccer here. It's got nothing to do with this page, how I've decorated it. And that's okay. I have just, this tells a story by itself. This tells a story, the writing by itself and put it together. And it, it all works because that's where I was that day. And that's the heart of this journal, I suppose, is this journal is about me capturing whatever I need to capture at the time that I sit down in it. It could be something in the past, it could be something right now that's happening in my life, it could be something that I'm thinking about in the future, whatever. And that's why it's sort of like a catch-all again. This one is one of those more well put together pages where the images all have to do with what I'm actually journaling about. This is more of like a scrapbook page where I'm journaling about a place that I went to. And I love this page. I absolutely love it. You know, I put a lot of time and effort into this one to make it look good. And it's one of my favorite pages in the journal. This is another one of my favorites as well. Um, but I really like the look of this one too. I've added some paint over the book page so I can have some journaling space. Put some paint over here. I love the dried flower with the tape there. Um, you know, I got a package with these these pieces here so I was like okay let's put that onto the page here too because that's the day that I received that package um, or it might not necessarily have been the day but around that time and it will remind me of that so yeah I'm really loving this style usually my previous journals I've had sort of one method of journaling or one type of thing that I'm journaling about but what my art journal showed me is that I can journal in any style, anytime, and journal about anything, anytime as well. And that's what's really helping me in my own, you know, my own well-being and my own creative um, therapy. <laughs> so yeah, and I don't necessarily journal every day in here. I was sort of going daily, um, but it's just there when I need it. That's the thing. This one, I'm writing about a book that I read and different lessons that I got from the book. And it's very sort of 
mixed media-ish. I've got napkins, I've got papers, I've got an envelope, I've got photos, and I've got paint. And yeah, I love it. This one, I just painted the page and wrote over it with a paint chip about the Barbie movie and the lessons that I got from that movie. Here's just some thoughts on writing that I had. Um, and this is some artwork of mine that I've put in the background and made a collage with. Um, you know, pairing different things together. Uh, one of my printable doilies, um, a sticker, and one of my printable journal cards. These are both printables in my Etsy shop, for example. Um, and a ledger. This ledger is also from my Etsy shop. Um, so I have the originals, yes, but I can also use printables in this journal So and pair them all together. Uh, sometimes, yeah, I print out printables and... I have a whole collection and sometimes I like, I need to clear these out, I need to use them. So maybe this was one of those pages where I was like, let's just use some printables <laughs> and not have them just taking up space, not being used. Um, this one, I was writing about my favourite songs. You know, this page, it's not really exciting, but it got what I needed to get down. The songs, these songs really, really were speaking to me at the time and I don't care that the page doesn't look very inviting. It's not the most engaging page. I could have done better, yes. But sometimes we only have five minutes to journal. And sometimes we don't want to spend all the time getting all the paint out and the glue. And we just want to do a simple page. And that's okay too because it's capturing that memory that is important. And then over here, again, you know, I could have done a better job with this. But there's still some fun things. I've had this in my stash for years and I haven't used it. So finally I've used it and I'm okay with how I've used it. It's, I could have done a better job, but I've finally used this piece and that's the main thing. And uh, yeah, I've talked about this page. This is my favorite page in the journal so far. I've done a bit of drawing here. I love that. Um, one of my printable doilies added with a whole bunch of my favorite papers that I just collaged together. Here's another printable doily. This is from a printable kit as well, pairing it with photos. This is another one of my printables. And I love how you can combine these different things. Favourite papers, book pages, printables, doilies, journal cards, photos, doodling, writing. And, you know, I haven't done too much writing on this page, but I got all the details down that I wanted to get down. And I love it. I love it. This one, you know, again, very, very simple. I just got... Um, a paint pen and wrote out my um, thoughts there. I was going through a bit of some deep feelings here and sometimes you just want to get them out and if you all you do is write across the page that is fine. This is about an insight that I got from my favorite podcast Psychology in Seattle. Do what is helpful. Love that. Here's an arty page. I had some fun with some paint and this is a great way to experiment too. Like I am as I'm creating these pages, I'm trying different things using different materials. I'm seeing what works, what doesn't work. I'm seeing what I like, what I don't like. And these are kind of draft pages. This whole journal is like a draft of the pages that will go into my book that I'm working on this year. My book is essentially going to be like this. Um, it's going to be insights that I learned, which I should mention as well. Basically how I started this journal as well was I have now got a... Um, running notes document on my iPad where I just write things I'm learning or things I'm thinking about or books that are inspiring me or songs that I'm loving and food that I'm really enjoying and I just write a note and then I date it and then I write the next note you know do what is helpful date um, phosphorescence is speaking to me in this way date um, I'm loving pineapple rings date um, thinking about wrestling with flowers today date struggling with feeling alone today, date it. And then I will go through that document on my iPad and that's what I'm using as my inspiration for choosing what to journal on the page. So, you know, reading the book, first we make the beast beautiful. Here's the date that I had these thoughts about the book. And now I've transferred that from my iPad journal. That's what I'm kind of calling it. It's my digital journal and just in note form and then kind of elaborating on it. Sometimes I only write the note um, but other times I write it more in detail on the pages. And I'm loving that method. I've always kind of wanted to journal in that way because I always have these little insights that I get. Um, I'm always thinking about things and I don't want to forget them. And this is a great way for me to let them out on the page and also express myself creatively, 
I really enjoy this page too. It's like, it looks like a bit of a mess, but I love this page. And so this can kind of tell me, yeah, I want to include a page like this in my book as well. And my book is basically just that. It's little snippets of lessons that I've learned and things that I'm thinking about and the feelings that I'm struggling with. And this is giving me a way to experiment with how to present them, how to write them. And honestly, if this was what the book looked like, that's kind of what I'm happy if the book look, looks exactly like this. Obviously, I can't because it's copyrighted things in here. Um, so, but it's giving me inspiration and ideas. I, I, yeah, I love this one. Love it. Um, again, using a printable from Amity Bloom here, using um, just different combinations of pieces, doing some drawing here. Some pieces I haven't finished yet, and this is where I talk about how um, you don't have to finish a whole page in one go. I did this page weeks ago, um, probably months ago. I'm looking at the date here. I, it was August, <laughs> and now we're in October, so I probably did this months ago. Uh, well, not months, a month ago, maybe. Um, and so it's there for when I need it. I know what this is speaking to me about. This is back when I was making my pattern journals. Um, and then I can just write on here one of my notes that I get from my iPad journal, my digital journal. This page is a big mess as well, but it's getting down something that was significant to me. Another prepared page, you know, I made an envelope journal out of this and I want to write down some notes on here. I don't know what yet, but I'll go to my um, iPad journal and I will figure out what to write there later on. Same with this, same with this. I'm going to prepare this a bit more. I'll probably add some paint or add some journaling space so I can write on here but keep some of the writing on here um, and again that, this is what I mean like the pages have don't need to have anything to do with what I'm journaling about they're just there documenting something in their own right same here I have some space I know what I'm going to be adding here it's going to be some vintage French stuff I got a package from France so that's what I want to document there um, here I'm documenting my birthday I do need to print out a photo and add that here um, so again, I've done this in stages. I did the, I did this page first, then I did this at a later date, then I did the writing at a later date, I'll add the photo at a later date, it's all good. This one here, just using the things. This was another time when I was going through my folder, I'm like, okay, I really need to use these things. I don't know what I'm going to journal about, but I've used them now, and I can write on there later on. I can write all over here too. This one, I actually have a bit of a journal with me episode coming up for this journal just kind of showing how I had prepared some pages and then writing on there and I'll go into a bit more detail about what I actually wrote later on to some more prepared pages some more you know just using different materials this one I just did a drawing that has significance um, and I'll do the writing about what that meant later on this one's all about my greatest lesson that I've learned this year or one of how I am made to wrestle with flowers which means I deep think, deep think, <laughs> I think deeply about flowers, um, meaning everything. I think deeply about life, and yeah, it can be a bit annoying sometimes. But I find the gems from the struggle, and all of this, this is all the gems that I get from the struggle, documented in this journal, which is what my book will be. All my book pages are the gems that have come out from the struggle of living. Um, I've got another prepared page here, another prepared page here. This is an event I went to, um, a gender reveal for a friend having a baby. So, you know, I will write probably about something completely different on this page. Some insight that I learned from a book, maybe. But the page itself reminds me of that event. And this is kind of yeah, the first time I've done that. I've always been a journaler that had to decorate the page to match what I'm journaling about. But art journaling, I find I can free up and just decorate and have fun and then journal what I need to journal at that time. So I don't even know what I'm going to journal on this page, but when I come to it, I'll know whatever is, needs to come out will come out at the right time on this page. Another prepared page, another one here. I will probably add some journaling space over the top of that. And I did a journal with me page about this one. I'll share more about that one there, but you know, a book page here. I made a Cinderella journal recently and I kept this page for me. And then this one is just one just showing you just straight writing. I use another paint pen. It gives me some thicker writing because I tend to write really small and I'm trying to remember to write in different sizes that there can be power in writing in larger words 
with fewer words on the page. I have to learn that because I don't want my book to look every page the same. I want there to be broken up in variety and some I tend to have busy pages I do tend to cover every little square inch the same with my room <laughs> um, and I have to learn minimalist pages are really powerful and effective too and just having larger writing can be effective as opposed to lots of tiny writing so just breaking it up and you know getting out my feelings you know I feel alone sad down just getting them out you know um, and it's so helpful and we all have thoughts and feelings and things inside of us that need to be expressed need to be seen and for me journaling has become about me understanding myself getting to know myself more connecting with myself listening to my voice finding out what's going on inside of me and just seeing myself the value of seeing yourself is so important um, and so therapeutic so I really hope you enjoyed that flip through um, I've been journaling mostly in this journal for my eyes only for again my own creative outlet and I've been loving it absolutely loving it I think yeah this is kind of my style that I've hit on but you know it changes as you grow and um, as life happens but this is what I'm loving at the moment and I've taken my art journal idea and kind of made it bigger so I do love the bigger pages um, and because I was at first this was so out of my comfort zone journaling like this um, but it took me two goes to practice in smaller journals where it was less intimidating to use a bigger, bigger page where I was like, oh, I don't know how to cover that page. But using the smaller journal, it was more doable. And now that I've, I feel comfortable doing this style, I'm like, yep, yeah, let's take it to a bigger journal. So I made this journal out of a box and um, fabric cover and just added some corners. And I literally just did plain pages because I know how I journal. I like to add all the things on top of the pages. And I still journal in the junk journal way. You know, I'm still using photos and ephemera from my life and scraps of paper. I'm still doing the whole junk journal, art journal style on the pages, but my base is all blank pages. And that's what I found works for me. Um, I do love the variety of pages. As a general artist, I love making those for my shop, of course, um, where you have all different size pages and different types of pages going sideways and right way up and small and large and all that type of thing, all different textures. But I found when I come to use my journals, this is me. This is how I do it. I add all the things afterwards. Um, so yeah, that I still want to I still love making them as a journal artist. That gives me a different outlet to express making journals in that way. And I still experiment that with that myself. Like, I can't help it. I, I do love pages uh, and putting them in journals, but I'm still working out how to use those journals. <laughs> I've made myself tons of junk journals with all different pages, and they're the ones that I don't use. I don't know. So we'll, we'll see. I, but I still like making them. Anyway, I think what I hit on is... Maybe, yeah, instead of binding in my pages, just use them to add on and stick onto the page. So if that's helpful for you, um, do it your way. Anything goes in the world of junk journals and art journaling. Um, and I really hope this inspires you to just get into your journal, whatever it is, whether it's a plain journal, whether it's a junk journal, um, whether it's a store-bought journal or a handmade journal. Just get in there. Use whatever you have. Use the things you love, use the scraps, and let your insides out on the page. Let your thoughts and feelings out on the page. Document your story, document your life, document your days and your memories. Put it all out there, all your heart and soul. It is so therapeutic, and I hope you get so much out of it. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Or if you have your own journal style, I'd love to hear about that in the comments because we're all different, and it's about finding what works for you. And uh, yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye, guys. A big thank you to my beautiful patrons who supported me in August. Thank you so much for allowing me to create full time and share videos daily. If you would like to become a patron in September, the link is down below in the description box. And that's where you get access to extra videos, sneak peeks of all my creations and first access to them. Um, you get the journal making series. I do a journal making series each month over there. 
and printables for the ruby tier and higher and mail sent to you for the higher tiers. There's also access to the Intentional Life course and the Marco Polo group if you're interested in that tier. And yeah, check out my journaling courses down below as well. They are open anytime throughout the year.